Hello and welcome back to the channel. Uh, this is Supercoach Challenges and we're looking at uh, the 400k team and uh, what we're going to be doing for the trades this week. So we kind of touched on them early in the review and then in the last video when we were going through a few premiums. But now um, I'm going to lock this trade in because uh, I kind of went back on what I originally thought and then I was looking at it today and I just couldn't really decide whether that was like the right thing to do. And it's it's a really hard uh, decision to make, um, a lot harder than I thought it would be because I thought it would probably just be, all right, you get this going um, and next week we get another one and another one. But the yeah, the money is going to be more of an issue. Uh, we we saw getting off maybe for the early rounds for bringing players in just because like a lot of these four hundred k three hundred low three hundred k's haven't really got those big spots of money yet um, but we should be able to see that come Flanders being out uh, I was trying to fiddle around seeing if I could move someone else out so that I kind of have him as that little bit of a loophole but sadly uh, it's not an option uh, because if I it's mostly because the rocks so weak because if I if I want to bring in a Ruckman, uh, well, actually not even that, just just the, the bench is a little bit weak. Because if I want to bring in a Ruckman, then in doing so, it's going to mean that uh, we lose, well, I don't want to trade radically here, so we're either losing a midfielder or a forward. Uh, and in doing that, I mean, midfield wouldn't be as bad. Losing a midfield spot. Uh, well, we're going to lose a forward spot, sorry, because we're going to have to move radically into the forward line and then uh, Madden will stay where he is. And then, obviously, the other position has to be filled up in the forward line. Uh, uh, sorry, in the ruck. And then if we were to do it differently and say we would... I was thinking about maybe trading uh, power because I think Bruins going down and I think maybe you could get given the opportunity. I feel like power's role, there isn't really any chance of change, whereas Bruin, we could see maybe... Brad, uh, Chris Scott, sorry, go, uh, let's change this up and put Bruin in the midfield now. So uh, what I was thinking instead is maybe what we do is uh, we trade power. This probably might, could go up another 10K uh, and then bring, bring in based on that so we have a little bit more money. Now, the problem is is that that would open me up to playing Davy or Green or even Radical, oh, not Radical here. Uh, well, actually, one of these mid forwards in there being Davy or Green, uh, uh, and or even Radigalia having to play them in the forward line as my sixth forward, but would allow me to loophole with Flanders. Uh, I just don't think it's really there's that much benefit to it. And we've got Chesser out in the defence, and I think it's probably better we get a play in and then we can let these other guys get some money. So. Now, the decision is whether we upgrade the ruck, which is the need at the moment, or we take a midfielder and try and kind of get someone who's a bit cheaper, but will hopefully get us the captain scored. Now, the options are we put Flanders out. Sub, so maybe up here. So the option are at the moment, uh, well, Tim English would be the, the aggressive play. Problem is, I was looking at his projections, and I've actually never really used the coach uh, class properly. Um, really, like I've used it for looking at the projections and stuff, and even price projections. But I feel like this graph here is actually really good, especially when you look at price. If we look at the price of English, based on what they're projecting, he is going to sit around that six four k mark, and at some point, you'd expect he throws in a 60 or a 70, which he has done. Now, he could just keep going at 130s and this graph becomes irrelevant, but maybe after another round, it would be able to kind of uh, put that in the, into this projected graph and then we'll go, okay, now we have to change our minds about what we do. Now, Richmond have quite a good ruck, as we've discussed in Nankervis, so maybe this is, this is the game where, like, Nankervis feels like an active ruck, kind of, and move around a field a little bit. He does he does well in hit out, which is why he scores a bit better, even though maybe uh the rest of like his he doesn't get a huge amount of contested like marks down the line or easy easy disposal, something that English does well. Um and a lot of other brocks do well. So um but that's my thoughts on English.
Now, the other option is we bring in a midfielder. And the midfielder would be looking at. Now, obviously, you'd love Oliver, but I just don't think with the, our money situation, uh, bringing in Oliver. Like, Oliver would be that, yeah, captain's lock. I think he can lose some money. I don't think 700k is like is the real thing we want to do at the moment because I think if we watch in a few weeks, we'll be able to get. I don't know why I always press that, but I might as well bring this up because we're talking primo. So, um, yeah, if we look at this, I mean, LDU will be back. Uh, but if we look at where's Led average. In the low hundreds? Is he in the 90s? He's 90s last week, so he must be here. Right, so if we look at Laird's graph, we give this... Sorry, sorry, I'm a bit all over the place. Uh, but if we look at this graph, it's kind of going down a little bit. Now, I think that might be taking to maybe affect the fact that he got that real low score at the start. Maybe it's going every three or four games, he might chuck in a 50, which I don't think is going to be the case going forward. But as you can see, we could get him maybe at that 600k mark, which saving 100k would be great. So my thoughts are we're going to skip the 700 to 600s because they've got room to move down. And what we're, The area we're going to look in, the 600 to 400s. And as we said in the first review, the guy that I think is the guy to go is Josh Kelly. And I actually think he's probably most likely, other than maybe Dunkley, but Dunkley's 10K more, and I think he could move a little lower. Like, looking at Kelly's uh, team, GWS don't really have any other... Like, they got green, but, you know, he could slow down, and Kelly just looks so good. He just looks so good. Like, as I said in the last video, go watch Kelly. He looks such a good player well he obviously is a good player but he looks in such good nick so i guess kelly's the one uh because like low this there really isn't anything i'd like to take it i mean for sure you could but i reckon you can wait on him he's gonna lose money um yeah there's not really anyone else who you go bang you need uh, ranto that could be a decent one. He just butchers the ball so much. See, like guys like Parrish are going to come down. I think he's definitely a top six. Um, so I guess like does that beg the question? Should we get, be getting Taranto? So if we look at Taranto's break even eighty seven with his score. If he scores a hundred, he's going to go up five point nine k. So maybe not a huge need at the moment, and probably goes the same for kind of Rosie. So if we look at Rosie, he scored 103 against Sydney last time. But is that, oh no, it's at the SCG, which I don't really like for his scoring potential. I think that Rosie could have a bad game this week playing at the SCG. Um, just not as open as what he might like. But I reckon round six is maybe what we'll aim for him because then he goes West Coast, St. Kilda, Essendon, North. They're like, very, that's very good matchups for him. Especially because two of those are Adelaide Oval. So... I think we may skip Rosie. Hope he has a poor game against Sydney. We get a we get a price decrease against the Dogs, and I think Kelly's the one. Like if we look at Kelly's run, and I'm still kind of sitting on this as as the guy because Cogs is going to go down money now, so we can wait on him. Clark could lose more money. I'm not really sh I don't really rate him as a top eight because he's just so up and down. But I guess that's how you get your average. So you know we could pick him up and it could be. Where he goes those big rounds. And he does have West Coast this week, so that's another thing. But if we look at Kelly, he's got Essendon, which will be a not great matchup. And he's got Hawthorne, which hopefully they'll go to tag someone who isn't Josh Kelly, but I think he's been out of work through. Like, look at his averages, even 118 against Hawthorne, 102. These two aren't great, obviously. Maybe this will be a bit better because it'll be a different. Um, a different midfield lineup to what he's normally played against. No Dunkley, I guess, might be able to help him out. Less midfielders in his team now as well. So, and then Colin, I guess Colin would say Geelong, right? But then 
Richmond North Freeman will come out of there. Look, I just like Kelly Pick. I'm not going to lie. I really like the Kelly Pick. The other pick I do like is Boot, but he's still in the 600. And I don't think I want to go there yet. Boot's still got money to lose. So, because if we go to cash cows here, guys who are likely to lose money, there's no one you really want to uh, pick up yet. So, like guys like Parrish, guys who are going to make money. LDU, obviously, still. Mason Wood, don't want to pick them. Aish, be all right if his role has changed, but don't know. law injury prone, Sarong. Good player, but he does just show games like this and then do nothing to go. Oh, I'm never trusting the bloke again, but he looks like he's going to have a really good season. Is it worth writing that money up? No, because we're probably not going to trade him out. Like We're looking at top eights, but no. I'm just going to put that one through. And then day cost, I mean green, sorry. So 7.2, he could be a good pick. Be a really good pick, and then these like, but the, as I said, there's a bit of waiting on these guys. I, if Kel, like, if we look at the two games Kelly's played, that eighty was going to be a one twenty one thirty, and that one forty eight was against a hard midfield. Like Carlton are a hard midfield to score against, which is why Kelly looks likely. Now let's talk about the last decision that we could make to put in. Kind of makes a little bit of the least sense though, but we could go uh, Dacos. Who is going to go up 23 points? I do not mind. That might be a pick for next. He scores. Let's have a look what they're thinking. So if he scores his projected score of. He scores his projected score of. I find it. Am I missing it? Oh, it's up here. Um, if he scores his projected score of 107, he goes up 23.2k. Brings him to Kelly's price. So it's an interesting decision, um, but I think I will... I think I'm going to actually... Oh, now I'm backtracking on what I was going to do. Because, right, Dacos is probably never going to be 540 again. Because Kelly, you might be able to get at 580. We could wait a week and get Kelly. What's this mean for the rest of it? We get a defender midfielder swing, which I do like. Which means we can... Yeah, you know what? This makes a lot of sense. Because we get that defender midfielder swing where we could loophole between McKenzie, Ashcroft, and Baker, which I really do like. Um, Even Kerno, actually. He plays early, which he does this week. We can loophole him. And we could play McKenzie instead. I might. I reckon Dacos. We're going Dacos. So we, after all that, we've changed everything we we're going to do. We we're going to go with Kelly. But I'm going to lock in Dacos now. Hope Kelly doesn't go 150 again. Hope Dacos uh, keeps going as big as he has. Um, I kind of don't want him to because I'm betting against him in my classic team, which is, yes, stupid, but I missed him. And then it was like deciding between Sheezel, Zebel, and... Uh, who was the other player last week? Sheezel's, Sheezel, Zebel, and McKenna. And like 80k, or I could fit Dacos by trading out Ridley, which may have been a good decision last week. But Zebel looks like a defender, like keeper. So in the end, I've decided to pass Dacos for now because I think that we be able to keep him to 580. But for this team, we're going to get him and I hope he scores well. Um, I think he is going to score well, but I... Like I already like it to give you a bit of context in, in my classic team, I was already three deep in defense. I think I'm just backing Ridley to go close-ish to Dacos. Um, but he could go next week anyway. So that's a whole different conversation. For now, we're talking about this team. And for this team, we're going with what we have set. Um, so as we discuss, we're probably gonna we'll probably VC oh clap, he plays tomorrow, so we'll VC Dacos into Hunter. Hunter was getting a lot of CBAs and he plays West Coast, so we're just going to go for that and we're going to take the Dacos VC against... Uh, 
against the Lions. He might not score as well, but will probably take 100, to be honest. Um, so that is the team for this week. Um, the only other thing, and obviously we've got the loopholing now between our, uh, with our Casa loophole. Um, so we're going to, which we can now do with Constable going into here. So that's good. And we might loophole him. And if Constable plays, we might even play him on field for like a Wanganee Malira, um, to be honest, because I think he'll score well. Probably close. If he gets game time, probably better. Um, anyway, so uh, the last thing, I forgot to do it in the review. I forgot to do it in the last video, which wasn't really about that anyway, so we can give that a pass. But I uh, forgot to do the votes uh, for this week, uh, last week. So um, I've decided that I'm going to name the trophy for this team after whoever wins this uh, next year, uh, by the end of the year, which actually could be a weird player because, you know, a premium could come in late and get 333 and maybe win it. But at the moment, the guys who are under 400K get a bit of a head start. And it's actually, just looking at this, no one from last week is in it. So uh, the three vote this week is going to Day. Good day. Um, number two is going to Sheasel. And uh, number one is going to Hunter. And I'm going to keep in mind with these scores going forward, the price of the players. So Sheasel could nearly go the Day route with the with the three, um, just because he's so low price. But this is his first round in the team. Welcome in. Thanks for the 120. But Will Day's been there, sitting there, getting the high, high disposals games. I've been saying it. He's been getting the disposal games, which is putting it all together. And against North, he was able to, probably because they're a weak matchup, but he's able to do it. Put the 139 on the board, and we want to see that going forward. And as I said, Sam Mitchell came out on the classic, uh, classified, saying that um, one of the reasons they traded Tom Mitchell was to, uh, and Diego Amira was to be able to give guy will day a run in their midfield so he's a part of their plans he's not going to be moving anywhere i can't see his cbas going up and down as much as someone like warple and uh hopefully he just keeps scoring well and maybe maybe he can become good enough to be a half half ish keeper if we have to or he can just keep scoring well until we have to move him on um so anyway thanks for watching um this will probably be the lock team i think i'm going to stick with day cost i'm not going to Go over to Kelly. Even even then, you know, Kelly is projected to go down if he doesn't score 100. So he could be cheaper next week if we get lucky. So um, anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks for sticking around. Um, as I say, every time, leave us a comment if you've got anything you think. If you think Dacos is the right one to go for, do you think there's another player maybe that should be jumped on earlier uh, first? Um, uh, thanks for watching. Subscribe, uh, subscribe uh, like the video, uh, and follow along with the team. See you next time.